So that was actually one of the other game companies we kind of talked about before, you know, in our meeting was mm-hmm. the was uh, Sega. Like Sega would benefit from going back and remaking older games. This right. was a published. This was a Sega game. Vanquish was. Um, so, but yeah. So going back, I would say that the Lost Planet games would be another great one for I think for Capcom to tap into. Hello and welcome to level one hundred and nine. The Thoughts and Players Podcast, the gaming podcast with both takes and no strings attached. I am Jeremy. Here with my compadre, David. What up? How are you doing this fine evening? Doing all right. How about you? Good. Doing okay. Doing all right. Making it through. Making a way. How Downtown. You walking fast. Faces passing them homebound. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bop. It is a bop. Uh, it goes hard for no reason hard. at all. It doesn't. It's so good. It does, and it's no reason at all, but it does go hard. Ladies and gentlemen, chickens, ducks, and hens, Vanessa Carlton, we welcome you into the pod. Uh, <laughs> level 109. Uh, we got some cool topics set it up. Lots of stuff been happening in the gaming, but we're going to keep a little bit more focused on some other things. And uh, before we get to that, we're going to start it where we always start it. And that's what we're playing. I can offer up first. Sure. What you got? So I really kind of haven't been playing much of anything <laughs> at, at recently. Not a lot of time. If I had to attribute, hey, here's the one thing that I've maybe been kind of playing. Um, I would say that it was a little more overcooked, too. Playing a little bit more overcooked, too. I was, for a, a few weeks there, headstrong and wayward, fastly wayward. I don't even know if that's a right expression or not. Into Expeditions Rome, making progress, crushing it, building up my Roman centurions and precepts mm-hmm. and whatever the heck else you call them. Haven't been able to make it back to it yet, but I, um, I uh, am not fretting. I do not fear because I have a firm understanding of how that game works. I know where I'm at in the game as opposed to before where I stopped and I went back to it and I'm like, I don't know where the hell I I, am. I don't know what's going on. I don't know who is who, right? I firmly understand and and remember everything and everyone. So when I have the time, which I believe will be soon, I'll jump back into it and pick up my progress there. Um, So I haven't really been playing at all. Mostly some overcooked to um, I did remember. I mean, I've always kind of known, but I did remember that I have my Steam Deck. I have not had a charge for a while, but I should probably do that so I can actually keep up the game playing, even if I go back to something comfortable like Wildermyth, where I can kind of right. just, you know, do something like that. Um, I want to do that, but the game that I've been playing, strangely enough, Overcooked 2. It's really it. Okay. Yeah. How about you? Um, I've been playing a bit of Overwatch. The uh, That little late spike problem I have yeah. with my computer, it doesn't affect overwatch as much as it does in like apex and dead by daylight Mm -hmm. so that's what i've been doing and i've been playing a lot of uh pokemon go tft a lot on my phone it's uh it's an honest day's work honest day's work so the the spike the spiking still occurs that hasn't have, has it seemed like it's resolved itself a little bit? Is it still Not just as bad as it was it's before? It's still just as bad. Yeah, gotcha. it's just like in the fights in Overwatch, it isn't it like an end all. Like if I get a leg spike in Apex and I'm standing out of cover for a half a second longer than I need to be, I'm down and dead, and it's yeah. really frustrating. Yeah. Pace the pace of play is a little slower in Overwatch, so it's it's yeah. not as effective. Yeah, you're usually not getting one shotted in right. Overwatch, at least in my rank. Right. Yeah, that's tough. For real, I'm I'm about to take it to freaking Micro Center or something. Yeah. So yeah. Like, hey, fix this. I've been um, not that I'm making any moves, but I've been slowly like looking at parts, trying to piece together what another build might be. I think I'm gonna end up. I mean, I kind of don't want to, though, but I've been thinking that maybe I just use the same case I had for my first build, which is like a mid-tower ATX. And the one I I use now is a a ITX case, so it's smaller. 
Um, so I've been thinking about using the original ATX again, but that ATX doesn't have USB C. Like like uh, within the case, I could probably get a motherboard that has that, but it doesn't have it right. in the case. I like to have it in the case too. So mm -hmm. at least I don't th believe it does. I might be wrong. I'm not wrong. Yeah, two USB 3.0s, no uh, no USB C. So I'll probably end up getting a new case too and trying to sell this old rig for what I can. Upgrading, have a nice little nice little gig, nice little new rig. But I gotta consider graphics cards and all that stuff and. NVIDIA yeah. and AMD have been doing some interesting stuff recently. I think the would it be five thousand series cards for NVIDIA now, right? Really, I haven't heard anything. They, the next one would be five thousand. The series next one now, would right? be yes, yeah. for sure. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like sometimes I read stuff and they're like the five thousand series, the five. Then you know that will mean this for the six thousand series, and I'm like, well, let's. 1,000 at a time. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's right. not jump That's multiple like, thousands. It's hard to keep up with 4,000s haven't been out for a year. What are you talking about? Yeah. It's like, yeah, let's, let's slow down. But, um, yeah. You're still having a lot. So, um, you said, so it really messes you up, I'm guessing, in Apex and in Dead by Daylight, right? Yeah, because there's a lot of, uh, they're, they're called skill checks in Dead by Daylight. Mm -hmm. And if I get that little leg spike in the middle of a check, I'm either not breaking free from the killer or i'm missing a gen check so it explodes so the killer hears me or i'm healing somebody and i missed that so i hurt them while he healing and then the oh killer hears that so yeah it's frustrating yeah well hopefully they'll be able to resolve it and figure out what's going on for real yeah all right well that's what we've been playing it sounds like we're trying to play the universe is Trying to mess with us a little bit in our, in our quest to play games, but we're trying to make some progress. We're stubborn. Uh, yeah, stubborn. Sure. But the world, the world moves on, and it does. Different game topics, different different things have happened in gaming, and uh, I guess we can jump into a topic that I want us to discuss first, because though I mentioned the game world moves on, and maybe it moves on to the past. Seems like what it's doing. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Nice. nice. So it was recently it was a recent written article in GameSpot. Um, I don't know if this is like a like a big announcement or whatever, but that Ubisoft, um, who we generally love, is uh, has been generally. working generally. Right. Generally. Here's the thing. It's not all bad. You know, last episode, a couple episodes ago, we gave love to EA, even though we loathe the EA. We did show them some love. That is that is fair. We said, hey, okay, okay. We, did, so we said, hey, we like these four games you made in 20 years. You know what I'm saying? Like, we gave you some love. <laughs> but Ubisoft, uh, it's being written that Ubisoft is focusing on remaking a lot of their past games. So if people, uh, people, if they remember, one thing was made of, there was a lot of hype around the Prince of Persia Sands of Time remake, which I don't know if that's still in the process of happening or not. They recently released a Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown game, uh, which came out to like very well received reviews. I actually have a copy. I got to play it. But again, I'm trying to get rid of this backlog. Um, but they're going back to revisit. So they're mostly going back to revisit a lot of Assassin's Creed games. Uh, so, you know, they said that they're considering like Black Flag. They're sure is on the list. Um, I'm assuming that three may be on the list, maybe Rogue, which is kind of like it launched, I think, either with or alongside Unity. Um, Unity may be on the list. <laughs> that game was terrible. That could use a revisit. So they're going back to look at remaking some older games. And my first thought was, that makes sense, because their new stuff really blows. So it would make sense for them to go back, get stuff that people liked, and just try to iterate and improve on something that seems to have a, a good foundation, rather right. than screwing up the foundation they have now with the games they're building, okay? Who knows what the next Far Cry 7 is going to look and be like. So that had me thinking. And something I was I was curious as, as to your thoughts as to what's another publisher that we feel like would benefit from focusing on remaking older games? Because they're just currently making games or currently their gaming direction is just awful. And they need to revisit their, their foundation, the past, and bring back some things with some solid game design and uh, can really can really get people to 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 give a crap about their company again, I guess. Right. Um, I'm sure there's multiples. Some people may do stuff there's like, oh, 
plethora. I can hear people saying, oh, you know who needs to do that? Bethesda does. And I would say that Bethesda already does that. If you have not checked, they've re-released Skyrim 77 times. Okay? They don't need to go back. It doesn't they need stop. to. They need to go forward. Everything they do feels like it's antiquated. But I, anyway, some some companies that may need it. Um, one one can make the argument that EA is a good call for that. EA had some bangers from back in the day, um, and it, it may pay for them to go back and remake some of those games. Um, but EA has also been they've been missing. But they've also been starting to hit a little bit more lately, and. Uh, maybe they're finally heading in a good direction game design wise, not business practice wise, but game design wise, where they can pump out some really great games. The Jedi Survivor and Jedi Fallen Order games are really good. Um, Apex, great, you know, great response, big build there. Some of their right. smaller indie games, like we talked about, It Takes Two mm-hmm. and Unraveled and all those stuffs are all that stuff is really like well received. Um so they may be on their way to doing something. You know, they got the sports games. They're terrible, but whatever. You know, they're on the way to maybe doing something. The game publisher that I thought can maybe revisit some old or some old releases and remakes is Konami. Um, That'd be a good one. Now, look, Konami has been going headstrong into, like, casino gaming, making, like, you know, penny and nickel slot machines and different stuff like that. Um, but they I have if, no idea. Yeah, really heavy. At, at one point, they suspended all game development activities just to go heavy and hard into that. Um, and that seems like it's it's Dang. been mixed success with that. I think. Who knows? They might have been wildly successful with it. But I think back, and we kind of were mentioning mentioning some other games before. Obviously, they've kind of taken a little bit of that, a little bit of that um, direction with the Metal Gear Solid games, right? Like. Mm-hmm. Snake Eaters coming back, you know, the idea that they could do a remake of um, Metal Gear Sons of Liberty, you know, um, the Metal Gear Solid Revengeance, I think it's called, the one with uh, with Raiden, was like really nice and fun. It'd be cool if they visited that one again. Think of even other games like Contra. Uh, that would be cool for them to go back oh, yeah. and revisit and remake. Um, they've tried to do some stuff, I feel like, with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles lately. Going back and revisiting some of those, I mean, can you imagine? And I think they have the Kawabunga collection that I think is a remaster of all those older Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle games. Yeah. For Zayden on his Switch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, to me, just look, just go back and remake Turtle Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, a turtle in a, a turtle in time, or a shell in time, or whatever it's called. I forgot. Right. Um, just go back and remake that. That was such a just great fun game, you know. Um, they've also got like a lot of like F one games that they were making back in the day. Uh, let's see what were some of the other ones that they were making. Um, like a lot of old because a lot of their stuff is arcade too. But just like kind of like going through the list, like you know, we talked about it. Um, you know the 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 Castlevania. Can you imagine like a remake of Castlevania, Symphony of the Night, something like I that? I think that would do well. It would, it would do tremendously well. And I mean, like, you'd have to wage whether you're trying to do the thing of nostalgia where you're trying to keep it 8-bit or 16-bit, keep it side scrolling, right. or if you're going to really try to update it, put in an Unreal Engine 5, some crap like that, right? Um, but that's, you know, you got to make those decisions. I think if they updated it or did something like that, it would be super cool. Uh, but the part of the reason I'm saying that is because, like, yeah, besides, like, a Metal Gear Solid game or something every now and then, they don't really have a direction at all. They don't really have anywhere near the influence and presence in gaming that they once had. You know what I'm saying? Konami yeah. once had a very venerable presence in gaming, and it doesn't have that anymore. So I feel like going back and visiting those games, seeing what worked with them, um, you know, and, and building from there and building something new would be a great move for them to build that presence and to start printing money. I mean, I know that that gambling and gaming in regards to that makes money. Gaming makes money that way too. I mean, EA showing you, you can just print cash. If you're, if you're, you know, having games that allow you to make the right moves as far as business practices and game design. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, like, they, they have a very wide selection of games that they could do that too. Yeah. They've been around for freaking ever. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like, 
I mean, yeah, like, like, I mean, they have games here going back to, I mean, some of them are arcade games. They got arcade games going back to the 60s. You know what I'm saying? Really? Yeah. Um, Dang. And, and so, like, we talked about, too, like, Metal Gear Solid, Snake Eater is one that they're revisiting. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's not so much as a re- revisit as a continuation, but kind of, I guess. Maybe it is a, re- uh, a remake. But Silent Hill 2, right? That's coming along. Right. So, um, yeah, they got some stuff in the in the hopper. They need to go back and just focus more on that. Um, because they have, in its... Yeah, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance was the one that I think focused with, the, with Raiden. Um, but that was developed by Platinum Games. Platinum Games makes super fun games. They've been kind of hit and miss lately. I think that last game they made with um, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game they made wasn't that good. The, the Transformers game they made was okay. Um, but I think they need to yeah just go back and figure that out. The last come on like the last really big game they had going back here, it's 2015. That was Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain. Oh wow, that's that was the last. Ago. That was the yeah, that was the last big Konami game. You know what I'm saying? So um, right. yeah, look, you're not gonna get Kojima back because you screwed him. You treated him <laughs> real, real bad. You're not gonna get him back. Um, right. You've got to find some other ways to bring some brilliance and some great game design. But I feel like if you want to make it, you could do it, man. You could do yeah. it. Yeah. You know? I think it'd be really cool if they did a a DDR like a, a greatest hits. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Because. Yeah. There's like one or two songs on every single DDR that they've put out mm-hmm. that is just like amazing. And then the rest of the list is just like, yeah, cool. Yeah. It's it's yeah. there. Yeah. But who's gonna who's really gonna play it, you know? Yeah. Um one I'm thinking about is they already are doing this, uh, Capcom with yeah. like the Resident Evils, and they're still mm-hmm. just shooting them out. I'm hoping for uh Code Veronica or Zero or something up mm-hmm. next. Yeah. Maybe hopefully not five. Five I still think is like a little too recent. I even heard rumors of them re remaking Resident Evil. So who's re remaking Resident Evil? Let's yeah. see. What's what's uh what's what's Resident Resident Evil Cause five? When did that come out? Let's see here. Uh, I was That was two thousand and nine. Yeah, I was gonna say I was living at my friend's house, I think. So that's a 15 year old game. I feel like that make that 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 works for a remake. It, I mean, it definitely. And and but there's a few games before that they need to do first. Sure. Yeah. But um, Capcom, you know, they have a quite a big list as well. You know, like mm-hmm. a lot of people have been asking for Dino Crisis. Um, they right actually, here. I think I just saw something of them right redoing um, the original Dead Rising. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. And then, that'd like, be cool. The Damn, Devil May Cries, those are good. Oh, those are great. You know? And but they and came out with Devil May Cry 6, wasn't it? Like a couple years ago, I think? Maybe. I think the, the last one I heard of, or at least I remember hearing of, is Devil May Cry 5. Okay, it might have been 5. Yeah, but, Dead Rising originally came out August 20, 2006. So it's 18 years old? Yeah, that was right before you and I graduated. Yeah, well, yeah, you don't need the data like that, right? <laughs> but yes, oh, came up, came up quite a. Quite but a yeah, lot. like even like Mega Man, mm-hmm. or like a new Marvel vs. Capcom. I know they're actually they're redoing those, right? So, and even like like like, like you mentioned like yeah, you mentioned like Mega Man, right? Like some of these some of the games we mentioned, right? Um, so like a, a game people wanted a new. Castlevania. So so there was a Kickstarter for a game called Bloodstained that tried to capture that, right? People wanted a new Mega Man. So there was a Kickstarter game that came out called Mighty Number no. 9, right? People wanted that. Now, I think Bloodstained did okay. Mighty Number no. 9 was dis- was a disaster. Really? But people want those. Yeah, it was a disaster. Um, but uh, people want those types of games. So like you said, if they remake, if they do a remake or a reboot of Mega Man, I mean, they can... They can kill it. They can crush it. You know. Yeah, because I mean, if you take the original few Mega Man's and you keep it the side scroller, like keep it the exact same game, but you give it the Unreal Engine Five and you give mm-hmm. them voice actors and mm-hmm. you know you just make stuff more, I guess, vibrant or like you know explosion, like actually like explode instead of just some pixels 
going everywhere. Like, there's so much more they could do and keeping the game exactly the same. Right. And it, I think it would do well. You want to know a game that um, you mentioned it, you mentioned in Capcom. You want to know a game that um, I would love to see a remake of, a game series that I contend is a great series. It's a little more recent, right? I think the, when did the first one come out? First one, oh, first came out, came out in December 2006. So it's about the same. Do you remember Lost Planet? Very faintly. So Lost Planet was, a, it's, it's essentially like, it's a third person shooter. You're on this snow island, at least the first one, you're on like the snow island, snow planet with a bunch of bugs. You have to kill these big bugs, right? Okay. It was kind of a mix of like, it was kind of it was kind of a mix of like I want to say like uh like the thing meets Starship Trooper like as far as the feel and all that different type of stuff and it was awesome they came out with Lost Planet plus Planet Two and Lost Planet Three I love that series I would love for them to do a remake of the Lost Planet games um, because I feel like you can make them more atmospheric and scarier now kind of like the way you would want to maybe mm-hmm. but I don't know they were also set around big action pieces it was Lost Planet Extreme Condition was like the full name of the first one. Um, I would love to see a remake of those because those games were so fun. I think I still have the original Lost Planet around here somewhere that I probably wouldn't want to give a play to. Um, but yeah, it was it was great, man. It was great. So that's another one I like to see Capcom look at as far as bringing back to be. games. There's three of them. Yeah, I'm not sure how good. I can't remember how good the third one was. Was I think my favorite was maybe the second one, but the first two were great. Yeah. I'm trying to think because we mentioned um, that wasn't developed by Platinum Games. At least I don't believe so. But I'm trying to think if there's another um, game property that was developed by Platinum Games um, that was maybe published by Capcom. And I'm trying to think of what that game. I've played it multiple times. I've beat it. It's one of my favorite games. I can't believe that I don't. There we go. Vanquish was the name of it. Ah, okay. So that was actually one of the other game companies we kind of talked about before, you know, in our meeting was mm-hmm. the was uh, Sega. Like Sega would benefit from going back and remaking older games. This right. was a published. This was a Sega game. Vanquish was. Um, so, but yeah. So going back, I would say that the Lost Planet games would be another great one for I think for Capcom to tap into. Yeah, I. Matter I of fact, see why not? They must now. I want it now. I officially willed something into my desire. I want this game. I want a Lost Planet remake. Save yeah, 77%. Came out in 2006. Lost Planet 3 came out in 2013. So, I mean, the series itself is more than 10 years old. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah, I mean, that'd be a good contender. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at it now. I just found a fa- I just found out that it's actually... 77% off is $3.44 on Steam. Well, oh, nice. that's what's up. Yeah. It's like Dino Crisis came out in 99 and Dino Crisis 3 came out in 03. Yeah. Cuz like I'm in uh a Resident Evil Facebook fan page thing and Mm -hmm. so many people bring up dino crisis in there oh yeah i mean it's the originator you know what i'm saying and you put uh you know you replace replace mr x with an iguanodon or something i don't know what you do but you you know you replace you replace nemesis with a a brontosaurus yeah you you just replace them with dinosaurs (laughs) and it's and it's just as scary if not you know right it's yeah and I looked up at uh, Ghosts and Goblins, because I remember that being an old one. The first one came out in 85, but they have a new one. They came out in 21. Yeah. I didn't know they were still making those, so mm-hmm. they're doing pretty well there. Oh, yeah. It's like some things I didn't even realize how big they were, like the um, Planet vs. Zombies, Plants vs. Zombies series. Yeah. I know people played them. I didn't know people play them the way they'd be playing them. Yeah, me either. Yeah. I I played one at my mom's house not too long ago. Yeah. Well, yeah. 
but they're just like I don't I don't see getting so hyped into that kind of game. You wouldn't think. But hey, man, people people do themselves, you know. You know. They got I sit it. here and play Overwatch and Apex all day every day, and there's some people that couldn't even play that game for an hour. Yeah. So. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think I think those are Konami and Capcom with Sega in third place. There, I think are you know some companies that need to revisit some of those old games and put them in a good position. I tell you what, freaking unless they get their bleep together, Xbox is going to be right there. Right, <laughs> and they shouldn't be, but they're going to be right there. Yeah, and there's even there's there's so many awesome games that could be like redone and remastered and but just those companies are just gone yeah you know like i brought up like the twisted metals and like yeah it's owned by sony i guess they can maybe give it to a different company Mm -hmm. i don't know how it works entirely but like those companies are gone yeah or like like figuring out like you know for sony if we're going to use sony as an example of that i always thought the bungie acquisition the fact that they were going to just acquire them and let them make their game marathon that oh i always kind of i i got it but then i also did it because i'm like well you have two fps franchises that are defunct that bungie would seem like it'd be perfect to rebirth and that is either kill zone or um resistance fall of man right like either one of those those are first person shooters it seems like bungie would be set perfect to to remake one of those i would probably opt for them to focus on killzone more than resistance killzone feels like it would be more in bungie's kind of area futuristic type of things technology type of things resistance is about you know aliens invading earth right Um, so i mean you know even though arguably destiny is about aliens invading earth but um (laughs) yeah it was felt like that but instead of them like re like bringing back one of their own their own old IPs in Marathon. Um, right. But I guess you know that is something that they could do. But I think Sony's in a good spot. They don't need to consider that. I think that Konami needs to consider this in order to get back on track. I think Capcom needs to consider doing this to further strengthen what they're already doing. Um, and I think it's the same. Sega's doing it already, too. They need to do it to strengthen and get back to what they were doing. Let's re- right. let's let's remake Crazy Taxi. Let's remake Shinobi. Let's do all these different types of things, right? And if and if I'm looking at if I'm at Sega and I'm looking at the success of Ghost and I'm looking at the success of Rise of Ronin and I'm looking at the success of like all the different from software games, like a, something like a Sekiro, and I'm looking at all those and I'm like I have Shinobi, the original, right? Like I can make this so awesome. Right. So hopefully they're they're taking direction and doing stuff right. Hopefully. Yeah. But, um, I mean, that's it for my topic, I think. Just these are what these companies need to do. Here's some old games that you check into. And, yeah, yeah let's let's remake Contra. 3D. Let's <laughs> 3D it, Unreal 5 it, Unreal 6 it. I don't care. <laughs> um. Okay. Well, uh, for my topic, I want to know, is there something you can add to some types of games that you think would better the experience of gamers like i'm gonna use mine as an example just to kind of throw it out there in tft you know it's basically a game of chess with like 12 different types of traits and whatever and there is a tutorial but it doesn't really go too in depth it it just goes, hey, this is what you do, and throws you into the wolves, you know? So I think if the tutorial was more in-depth, like, hey, these kind of traits, you know, are like backline traits. So you want to go with a backline trait and, like, a frontline trait. And, mm-hmm. like, not all frontlines and all backlines are going to go well together. They might do something a little different. You know, and like these kind of items go with these kind of characters. Like you don't you don't want to throw on a uh, an item onto a character that raises their shields when they're a backline character and the faster 
they fire their weapon, the more damage they do or whatever. Like they're in the back line. They don't need more defense because mm-hmm. everyone's already dead. They're they're not gonna survive anyways. Kind of like situation. You know, they right. they there's quite a few different items in TFT. And yeah, they they tell you what they do, but like the characters are are quite different. And mm-hmm. just because they are a tank, you know, they don't necessarily need the same defense items especially if one's like a a magic tank maybe they need a a defense but they also could use a a magic item that buffs their ultimate power yeah you know so like more in depth like because of course yeah you can always go to youtube and see what the top players are doing Mm -hmm. but most of the time they're just doing it and you don't understand why Right. So if you don't have the exact same scenario that they had in their game, you're you're lost. Because like, for example, I watched the a video. This guy's like, hey, this this combo right here will get you the top four and will get you to like masters or whatever the top one was in TFT. I can't remember the name of it. Mm-hmm. And sure, yeah, I tried it. I wanted to see how high I could get, and I didn't get any higher than I usually do because I wasn't playing it correctly the same way he was playing it. Mm-hmm. There's just there's just so much the game can tell you that it doesn't. Yeah. So I think a more in depth tutorial for like strategy games would be a great addition. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. I think um one one that I would have I'm not sure if this exactly kind of. 100% falls in line, but I'm thinking about a thing that I think just generally added to games would make them better is either go two ways. I'm going to say um, games to either have more integration of mods or like console command type options. And okay. so like this is I think this is less of an issue for like PC games, but like for consoles, like console commands can be great because it allows the player to have more choice in regards to how difficult something is or how they may want to like view or interact with the game. I know for myself, like I tend to, I've noticed that I tend to put more time into games that allow me to modify or change certain things about them. Mm -hmm. um and so i feel like that would that would help and i think it would really help with games that are like either strategy games or rpgs because those games are also really really big time sinks so to be able to have like the most customized way of playing that game um accessible to you whether it's through mods or through console commands would be great now like for instance some games do this like i said on pc it's fairly more common Bethesda has the creation store or whatever, or engine thing or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, which is like paid mods. So you can have these paid mods that you use to you that you can use in your game. I think just kind of having a system set up like that for Xbox or for PlayStation, the equivalent of a Steam Workshop or something like that, would make games better. But I think like one of the good things I experienced, for instance. A game that does a really good job with this as far as mod integration and console command stuff is uh, Mountain Blade Bannerlord. I can I can all the time I'm in there tweaking and changing things to make my my gameplay play exactly the way that I want it to. Sometimes you get um, I mean, again, it's the thrill of the game. Sometimes you're playing games, you get a really, really terrible RNG, right? Oh, Some really sure. terrible RNG happens. And guess what? Maybe one day. You've been having a bad day and you want to log in a mountain blade because you want to take a castle on a mount and you get some real bad RNG and the enemy sends a 2000 soldier army to take out your, your siege count <laughs> camp. And you're like, I just want this little, I just want this castle. You can are, you can change up and, and, and modify it there rather than having to unload, reload all those different things. You can do the cheese it, but you're just, you're getting the same effect without having to do all that other stuff. Right. And this allows you the freedom and access to do it. I think that'd be a great thing to have more in games. That I think it really improve games. You know what I'm saying? Because like too, what you were saying with the, like like a tutorial, mm-hmm. 
if you're opening up a console command and looking at things, you can actually learn from more of a binary programming instance why something does what it does. Right. Sometimes better than it, than a tutorial can even explain to you. And then you have more of an understanding of, okay, when the game is telling me this, this is what it means, you know? So, then be cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's great. Because it, it, that kind of brings up a point, because a lot of people are visual learners, and then a lot of people are just like, word i don't know what it would be you know they can just read it and yeah. get a good grasp on it you know like i in school like ma- i was good in math because they had to show their work and i understood that but mm-hmm. when they just said you know this that and the other in like english class they didn't really like write down and i i was lost right so that yeah that brings up a good point yeah they kind of say like this is this is a metaphor. And you're like, well, why is it a metaphor? Well, like, because it does this, this, and this. And you're like, okay, but what is that? <laughs> I don't understand. Okay, okay, whatever. Right. Exactly. You say something that seems to sound exactly like that. And they're like, that's not a metaphor. Uh, that's, uh, you know, I don't know. Something else. And you're the like, I don't get it. Yeah. So, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. But um, we kind of talked about that before. Like, the another example was, like, games being able to create situations whether they're in tutorials i think like in game works that works the best up uh, to really drive through a firm understanding of the mechanics of an aspect of a game the one that i used before kind of specify would be like stealth games um uh when i mentioned like the first time you encounter a clicker in the last of us part one like you have to that that situation forces you to understand how the game mechanics work and it's making sure that you understand in this game, you need to respect clickers. They're an enemy type <laughs> that you have to enter a certain way, and you can't just do whatever you want to do. A freelancer. And as someone who loves the freelancing games, I couldn't freelance in that situation. I had to abide by the rules. I had to learn the mechanics. It took a little while for me to get through that level. That level's not that hard. But it was me trying to for- force a what they call a uh, round peg into a square hole. It was my work. <laughs> I had to I had to learn to grab the square peg for the square hole and only the square peg for the square hole. Okay? Those you can't you can't use a triangle and piece on a on a trapezoid or what the hell ever else you want to do. You gotta use a square. And so uh, I think even though it can be frustrating for players like me, I need to get over it so I can understand the mechanics of the game. Because that because having that understanding is pivotal. That's why I didn't take nearly as long and die nearly as much when I encountered clickers later in the game. Right. You know? It's like, you were making the game so much harder than it actually was. Right. Because I wanted to play the whole game my way. Mm-hmm. And they said, the developers said, well, no, you've got to play this part this way because that's how we designed you, designed it for you to play. Um, right. And eventually you have to bend to the will of the game if it's developed well enough. You know, it's not like that's a bit of, a, of that of something compared to like a From Software game where you can cheese it. I don't have to bend to the will of anything in Dark Souls because I can just cheese it and I can fall into the map and I can pass several enemies and get to where, wherever where I want to go. <laughs> right. Um, but, you know, with certain games like that, you got to figure out and you got to stick with the rules they put out there for you. Yeah. that And that reminds me of for my final thought. OK. If I forget what it is by then. I will, I will make sure I remind you by saying, hey, you had something for your final thought. And the last thing I said was from software dark, melt, dark souls. melt into the map Dark Souls. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah that, that's all I got for my topic. Okay. Okay. Well, if you're good to go, then that leads us to final thoughts. Okay. Okay. Where we can give a final thought about anything that is related or unrelated to the podcast episode. Well, David, how about you give that final thought? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, what was it? Oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah. Um, okay, so there is this woman, and she's developing this controller that is literally mind control. You put it on nice. your head, and she uh, was playing the newest one, Dark Souls, Elden Ring. Okay. So she was playing that and beat one of the harder bosses just by using the mind control uh, mm-hmm. controller thing that she's developed. Mm-hmm. And I think that is 
so cool and so amazing because there's quite a lot of people who have like disabilities and stuff and you know they've were able to make these controllers work for them and everything like that but there's even other people that just don't even have hands or feet or whatever and you know they just don't even have the ability at all so if they can even come to process of just hey move forward move left you know like in their head mm-hmm. you don't even need that yeah and and that and that could actually just take over everything you won't even need a mouse and keyboard you just just to think yeah you're right i mean that does kind of like you know a lot of people kind of and, and i think that's the Elden Ring and like the that whole thing is a good base to kind of jump from because you're talking about like using the mind to play games and people who may not have be able to do certain things because of whatever and life it, it makes something more accessible, right? Mm-hmm. Um that that's like a yeah, that's a great thing that again is a sticking point for a lot of in a lot of situations. I think about um that like infamous kerfuffle that happened in 2016 when uh, Nintendo launched uh, Star Fox Zero. And it had a, an easy mode in there or something where essentially, if I'm remembering correctly, you could display very little skill and still progress through and beat the game. And a large segment of people were outraged. They're like, what? This means that someone who has it on easy mode can beat the game barely even playing it. And it's like, why do you care? Yeah. Do, uh, why do you care? They want to see the story. Yeah. And and whether they're whether they just aren't able to build the skill, or they don't have the time to gain the skill, or they have other either disabilities or things that have happened that have affected their ability to play the game the way that you know it is on normal or, the, or whatever, it just makes the game more accessible. And I mean, you you know sitting wherever you're doing wherever you're doing, trying to be a try hard and saying, "Huh, they could just beat the game without barely playing." Well, you can beat the game on hard. You can beat the game on hard, and you can go around. And you can yell at the top of your lungs that I beat Star Fox Zero on the hardest level. My junk is massive, right? Like, <laughs> if that's what you want to do, then do that. Right. Like, the only game I've done that with is The Last of Us Part 1. I beat it on Grounded, and I've never been so hard on myself of do, with anything. I've died over, like, 200 times trying to beat it on mm-hmm. that difficulty. But, like... People play that game on easy. The very first time I played that game, I played it on easy because mm-hmm. I had no idea what was going to happen. You know, I don't want to sit there and be stuck at a part and then I have to be like, you know what? I can't get past this. I'm just going to restart the game and then mm-hmm. have to recoup all that time I spent playing. Because that game's a, you know, 10, 12 hour game. If yeah. I'm eight hours into it and I'm stuck on a spot, that's eight hours I have to redo. Yeah. Yeah, that reminds me of like, uh, so there's two games I know for, that I remember at some point engaging God mode on. One was Control. Control has a god mode and a couple other accessibility features that are really cool. And then another game was called Blood Roots, which was like this like really fast paced kind of game. Um, and it's like it's like one hit, like one hit kill. Right. So like with Damn. Blood Roots, you go into a level, it's super fast. You can kill an enemy in one hit and they can also kill you in one hit. Right. So I think of something like maybe like a Hotline Miami kind of has that same thing. Um but they also had a god mode, so you get scored on how fast you complete a place and you know what your score is. And I would enable god mode sometimes to just I wanted to play it, not without having to worry about what my score was, or you know I wanted to go through a level and figure out what all the mechanics and obstacles were before I went through and did it for real. So right. you know, and and it was cool. And then I turned it off and I played it at whatever difficulty I wanted to, and I was fine. I didn't have, and I got done playing it and I beat it and I enjoyed the game. Um, there are people that can't play games the way that you and I play games. And the yeah. idea that like this lady's created a controller where you can do that with your mind with some people, that's, that's the muscle they have, right. Th- th- mm-hmm. th- they can play games with. Um, and it just makes things more accessible is awesome. You know, I mean, the fact that someone who, who may have a disability can use that and beat a game like Elden Ring or beat a game like Demon Souls and experience that that world and that lore is awesome. You know? 100% agree. Um, my final thought kind of branches off of that whole thing because, though, I mean, there's tons of people that play those games, love those games, and they're respectful about it. There's a large segment 
of that fan base, the From Software fan base, that are insufferable. Because they believe that they're the greatest games ever, gamers ever because they beat a From Software game. Um, some people just like the challenge, and that's awesome. Um, but recently, Elden Ring had dropped their DLC. I believe it's called Curse of the Earth Tree, but I might be wrong on that. I know it's something Earth Tree. That's what I know for sure. It's really weird. Uh, let's see here. I'm just going to look it up real quick to make real quick to make <laughs> sure that really I've got. Really weird. Earth Tree is. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Shadow of the Earth Tree is what it is, not Curse. Shadow of the Earth Tree. So that recently came out, and a lot of hubbub has been going around because a lot of people are saying that it's too hard. Um, now, this could be from a lot of, quote-unquote, general people, because I think it was a few weeks ago that um, Elden Ring passed either 21 or 25 million copies sold. Wow. So that's more than, I think, just the From Software hard, hard diehards. But uh, a lot of these people are saying, hey, it's too hard. And um, I think Miyazaki, I think, is who's like the, the head game designer over at From Software, there's some retort. He's it's it's interestingly enough, it feels like in a lot of respects, he's kind of telling them to get good. Which I find yeah, hilarious. I, did, I heard about that. It was like yeah. get good. It's, yeah. <laughs> which is which hilarious. Is, which is fair. You know, if if the game developers want to do that, they are more than obligated to do that. Mm -hmm. But it's also the exact opposite. If they want to make it super easy, you then that's what it's going to be. But you don't have to play that difficulty. Right. If you want it to be hard, play on nightmare mode. Right. Yeah, it was it was the same issue um, that I heard running into Sifu. Was that people were like, it's hard. And they came out with an easy mode afterwards, like post-release. And people are like, what is this? I make it easy. And it's like, well, because some people want to play the game and enjoy the. You understand there's stories in these games, right? And some people just like like different interesting stories and the right. idea that they can't experience a story that may connect with them, that may change your perspective and provide some insight into their lives because they can't mash X fast enough. is an absurd <laughs> notion. It's absurd. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, like they did that. It's, it's the same thing. I just find it fully funny that like a fair a fan, from a fan base, that, fan base that share amount just tells people that get better at the game. If you got a problem, get better at the game are sitting there saying it's too hard, sir. Dear sir, you've made this DLC too hard for us. <laughs> and the creator's like, well, you're telling everyone else to get good. How about you get good? You get good. Yeah. But that was interesting. How the turntables. How the turntables. But that is, uh, that's it for me. I guess okay. that brings us to the end of level guess, 109. So. Yes. It's level 109 of the Thoughts of Player Podcast. If you liked what you heard, Please like, follow, su subscribe to the podcast on your preferred podcast service. We're on the Apples and the Spotify's and Google's thing and Amazon's thing and wherever else there is. Um, you can also like and follow the pod on the socials. We're on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. Everywhere. Everywhere, pretty much. Um, you can also find us on YouTube where we upload video versions of the podcast every week. Um, if you want to support us, there's a couple ways you can do that. One, buy that merch. Buy that merch. All I want for Christmas is that thoughts and players merch. Okay. Oh. Uh from our from our Teespring store. Get that there. Um also we have a Patreon. If you want to support us that way, we have three tiers, a two, five, and seven dollar tier that offer uh different types of bits and goodies to support us at different levels. Um, most recent thing I think is up there is the second episode of the, um, oh man, why am I forgetting it? The Game Dev Tycoon playthrough we're doing with the thoughts, or is it Players Inc. and our founder, Black Guy. So you can go there and check that out. <laughs> um, yeah, there'll be more content there. Uh, that is it for me, though. David, was there anything else you wanted to add? Please. All righty. Well, thanks for tuning in, and we will catch you on the next level.